Good morning, students. I am Dr. Sujata. Today we are going to discuss about amoebiosis. Amoebiosis, which is caused by Antamoeba histolytica, which is a protozoan disease. It is a protozoan disease. Here you can visualize amoebiosis is a food and waterborne infection. It mainly causes diarrhea. Mainly causes diarrhea. It can be transmitted through flies and orthopod diseases. It can also be transmitted through sexual transmission. How we can prevent the disease? This disease can be prevented by proper washing of food materials like vegetables, fruits and proper cooking of the food. Okay? Next, we have to discuss about introduction. Introduction of Antamoeba histolytica. Antamoeba histolytica belongs to the kingdom Protista. Subkingdom Protozoa, Phylum Sarcomastigophora, Subphylum Sarcodina, Class, it belongs to the class Lobosiae, it belongs to the order Amoebiata, it belongs to the genus Antamoeba and the species is Histolytica. So, Antamoeba Histolytica causes amoebiosis. Okay, it is a protozoan disease. Amoebiosis. The whole name is amoebic dysentery. Amoebiasis, the whole name of amoebiasis is amoebic dysentery. It was first discovered by a scientist called Lodge. Lodge is the scientist who first discovered the amoebic dysentery. Amoebic dysentery it is an old name. But nowadays we are calling as amoebiosis. It can be transmittable through dogs, cats and Primates. What do you mean by primates? Primates are nothing but mature animals. Example, monkeys. Okay. Next, amoebic dysentery. What is amoebic dysentery? Amoebic dysentery it is the infection of intestine resulting in severe diarrhea with the presence of blood and mucus in feces. The presence of blood and Mucus in the feces is called as amoebic dysentery. What do you mean by dysentery? Dysentery is nothing but diarrhea which is having viscous along with the blood. Okay, now what is amoebic dysentery and what is dysentery? Okay, we are discussing about the structure, structure of antamoeba histolytica. As you might all know, antamoeba histolytica was discovered by Lots. Next, Antamoeba histolytica. It is a protozoan parasite. Here you can see the structure of an Antamoeba histolytica. Okay, it is a shapeless organism. Coming to the geographical disturbance, it is distributed all over the world. Worldwide distribution. Not only in the tropical and subtropical region, it all distributed all over the world. Subtropical means low temperature, high humidity like that. Habitat, coming to the habitat, it is mainly habitat lives in the intestine of the man. It is mainly lives in the intestine of the man. Amoeba, it is a free living protozoa. Okay, free living protozoa. Amoebiosis caused by Antamoeba histolytica. About 90% of the Infections are asymptomatic. It doesn't show any symptoms, even though they are suffering with the diseases. Only 10% of people will show the symptoms. Next, amoebiosis. Coming to the amoebis, amoebiosis, it is a shapeless organism. It consists of a nucleus, food vacuum, pseudopodia, the locomotory organs are pseudopodia. Okay? Next, coming to the morphology, the morphology of the Antamoeba histolytica, it consists of three stages, three stages, it consists of three stages. One is trophozoid, another is pre-cystic stage and cystic stage. Trophozoid, it is the active feeding stage. Trophozoid is the active feeding stage. So, next we are moving. First of all, we learn what is the morphology of the and the viva is like it. it consists of three stages: trophozoids, trophozoids. 
the process of transfer of cystin to trophozoid. Trophozoid is the active feeding stage. The next stage is encystation. Encystation means this is the process of transmission of trophozoid into the lumen of the intestine. Trophozoid into cyst and passes into the lumen of the intestine and released out through the feces that is called as encystation. Do you know the difference between existation and encystation? What is existation? Existation means we are taking the food along with the cyst. The cyst is containing food that is called as contaminated food. The organism enters into the body by intaking of cyst. So the organism enters into the cyst. Then it goes for existation. What is existation? The cyst is converted into trophozoid. The trophozoid is the active feeding stage. It feeds in the intestinal mucosa and causes disturbances in the intestine that is called as existation. So after birth, the trophozoid, when there is an unfavorable condition in our stomach, the trophozoid, which is the active feeding stage, it converted into cyst that is called as existation. This existation is released into the lumen of intestine and released out through the feces. When this feces was taken by the person through the food, it was contaminated. Next time, the life cycle. Here the life cycle starts with quadrate cyst, which consists of a four nucleus. Mode of transmission, we already know, through the contaminated food and water, the cyst wall is very resistant to the stomach, the intestinal juice. The cyst wall is very resistant to the intestinal juice, so it directly enters into the body and undergoes existation and encystation. Okay, ma, life cycle. Life cycle we already discovered. We discussed life cycle cyst. From the cyst, it cyst stays to trophozoid. Trophozoid to cyst. Only this is the cycle. It is a small cycle. Cyst we are taking. Cyst we are taking, and the cyst grows in the intestine. In the trophozoid it is very active. It is the active stage of the amygdala cysta. Directly enters into the intestine and causes lesions. Sometimes it may reach to the liver. Sometimes it may reach to the liver and causes abscesses. Abscesses, small lesions of the liver. Abscesses means small lesions on the liver and causes liver infection. When there is unfavorable condition, it converts into cyst, quadrial cyst. That is released into the feces. Okay, look, the incubation period. About two to four weeks or longer incubation period means the time required for the parasite to get multiplied in our body that is called as incubation period. Incubation period means the time required for the parasite to multiply and cause the disease in our body is called as incubation period. Incubation period is two to four weeks. Sometimes it may be as longer as sometimes it may take one month. It may take some uh, six months. Sometimes it may be acute or chronic disease. Acute means very spread, easily spreading disease. Sometimes it may be a chronic disease, lifelong carrying disease. So amoebic uh, amoebiosis mainly invades. Invades means attack, attack to the intestine and causes flask shaped ulcers. It mainly causes flask shaped ulcers in superficial are deep layers of the intestine. It causes abdominal pain. Abdominal pain means stomach pain. Abdominal pain, diarrhea, blood, fever, and tesmus. And tenismus. Tenismus means continuous feeling for release of stools. Motions, that is, uh, in general English, we can treat as a motions that is called as tenismus. Perianal ulcers. Unable to go for stool, there is a pain in pain releasing the stools. Okay, flask shaped ulcers and superficial or deep layers of the intestine, along with the abdominal pain and diarrhea. The main symptom of this amoebiosis is diarrhea, mucus diarrhea, viscous diarrhea, along with the blood is called as amoebic dysentery. As you might know, rice water is diarrhea, it is the symptom of vitriocolum. So what is the difference between this? Here, the, the stool is in the form of viscous, very thick, 
septic form of diarrhea along with the blood is called as anaerobic dysentery. Here, the perianal ulcers, ulcers will be created by <coughs> trophozoites. So, trophozoites causes ulcers. It causes intestinal bleeding. Sometimes it may causes high fever, high fever, and causes perforation. Perforation is making the holes on the intestine and leading and leads to paralytic ileus. That means paralytic ileus means paralysis of the intestine. It mainly causes flask shaped lesions on the intestine, which is highly painful. Next time, acute amoebic dysentery. It mainly causes diarrhea. Diarrhea sometimes, sometimes very rare cases, it causes constipation. Constipation will be causes. Along with this, we already discussed the stool along with the blood streaked mucus that is called as amoebic dysentery without knowing any symptoms if the motion is having thick, thick form and there is a presence of blood streams we can indicate it is a amoebic dysentery next we have to discuss about diagnosis how we can diagnose in case of amoebic dysentery a specimen can be taken as stool. Stool is the main specimen. Stool spares can be taken as a specimen. Sometimes aspirated pus of the intestine. We already discussed you know, flask shape lesions, ulcers may be created. So pus can be taken. The prophozoid sometimes enters into the blood. So blood can be taken and cerebrospinal fluid can be taken for the specimen. Mainly we can take the specimen as stool. Next time, by microscopic observation itself, we can identify the we can identify the stool sample. Generally, we have to take a clean slide and prepare the smear of a stool, and we have to cover with the cover slip and observe under microscope. Okay. In case of blood also, we can show the leukocytes serological test as you might all know elisa hemagglutin test latex agglutination test nowadays we are using pcr blood elisa next finally we are coming to the treatment treatment the main treatment we are using is tinidazole 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 it is an antibiotic which can be used against protozoa diseases it can be given in three doses after meal for eight to ten days. Okay, this is the treatment. There is no vaccination for this. Just we have to control. We have to prevent the disease. How we can prevent the disease by proper washing of food, vegetables, fruits, and these fruits and vegetables are water supply should not be contaminated with human feces. Proper sanitation should be used. Water supply should be properly cleaned. Chlorination of water, boiling of water, by using chemical treatments of water will be used against the amoebic dysentery. We should properly use food hygiene. We should not, we should allow cockroaches and flies onto the food materials. Okay? This is about Entamoeba histolytica. So finally, what you are going to be conclude, Entamoeba histolytica is a food and waterborne infection. It is mainly caused due to improper handling of food. We are taking the food and we are keeping the food without proper closing up the food. So it will cause us Antamoeba histolytica and may transfer the disease. So, proper cooking of food, proper handling of food, proper boiling of food, and before meals, after stools, we have to wash your hands properly. So, that may prevent the Antamoeba histolytica. It is not a dreadful disease, it doesn't cause us the death until unless you follow the precautions. Okay, thank you.